13 mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Speedway, thanks for listening to Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
well, the performance has gone down since he left because he was the one that was there when they won the five races in the chase. But I'm seeing, you know, Tony at least last year was competitive on a on a on a basis on every just about every race. He's not even to, even though he finished eighth. Yeah, at, finished at Charlotte, eighth, yeah. that's his best finish of the year. Yeah, I first know. top ten this year. So. Uh, Newman is the one who's running better than any of them, and he's the one that's going to be out. Kid, he's going to be out of a car next year. Yeah, they've already figured that. I hadn't heard it yet for sure. Newman's out of the car this year, and Harvick's going into it. Okay, that's, that's why. A, that's why I thought Harvick would go. Bef- yeah, well, longer. Harvick's already. I mean, he already put it out that he was going to be in the car next year. So for them to do anything else, they would have to go to a four-car operation. Yeah, but. Uh, as far as Kyle Larson is concerned, I think Kyle Larson, he's going to either hang around. Well, and, he's he's already linked into Gibbs already. Well, yeah. But I think he's because he's hang, he's in there with the Turner Scott Motorsports Group. Don't be surprised if he don't show up somewhere driving one of Junior's cars down the road, which is a Hendrick car. Yeah. So don't wouldn't surprise me. I mean, that's just the way I see it. But. <sighs> Never can tell. So, so who's who's the manufacturer leading in points now? Toyota. Toyota. I would think you'd go to Gibbs with the Gibbs team then, since they're strong in Toyotas. Well, it, I mean, but now, now this is going to be interesting. Then you're going to have Kenza, and then you're going to have Kyle, and then you would have him, and then him, Denny. Don't know. Don't know It'd how. Be interesting. The fly on the wall to listen to that conversation, thinking about that. Well, it all comes down to sponsorship money. Who can come up with the money? Um, and I'm sure with the, the type of driver Kyle Larson is and the name he's made for himself, sponsorship money is not going to be that hard to find now, for him. Now, when Joe gets pissed at him and yells, Kyle, get your butt in here, they won't know who come in. That's right. <laughs> well, it'll be, it'll be a fun time for him. It'll be an interesting time down there. Now we're going to have Nick Harrison. Nick, Har- in, Nick in Harrison, the crew chief on the '51 Phoenix Racing Chevrolet, and Landon Castle, who's driving a Sprint Cup and a Nationwide car. Yeah. And C.J. Facing Camping World, and he's going to have his first truck race this weekend in yep. Dover. Dover. That'd be cool. So that'd be. That'd be. A- I don't know if you met C.J. when we we're. Well, no, sorry, you didn't get to go. No, I didn't see. No, I didn't. I never. I've never. I've seen him race, but I have not met him. I mean, right. But, yeah, he's a, he's a nice kid. i uh, talked to him for quite a while when we were up at Richmond, when you were having dinner with Lee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had to, had, had to, do, I had to do that. Family ob- obligations come first. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> who knows? Maybe we can still talk him into getting you a late pass in there. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, geez. I'm looking to... I'm looking down the road at maybe some races down the road here for yeah. too much longer, hopefully. Yeah. So The biggest thing is to get this paperwork in time. Yeah. yeah. And everybody apparently is changing the, 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 the I, deal. Used to be I could email. I could, a couple of times I'd just call in and say, okay, what do you need? And they just tell them what it is and they do it. Well, so, I went and looked at a couple of them and they were... You got to get them in two and three weeks ahead of time, and you got to have yeah. it on a, all this other stuff. Well, that you know, that's the way things are getting to be these days. It, it'd be it, uh, the other thing that would be nice for us is if we had a way to go to almost every race, have it in with one of the teams that flies yep. everybody there. And that would be that would be interesting. And then at that point, we might then might qualify as a uh, home journalist with them, and then. Bang. That would be good. You need to work on that. <laughs> it's like all the other things on my plate, yeah. What would you think about that cable breaking in the other night in the race? That, that was interesting. That was interesting. Uh, it just goes to show you, you know, the amount of damage it did to Kyle's car. You know, thankfully the, the ten people that got injured by it, there, there weren't any at a high speed where it could have just been like a knife through butter type thing, hot knife. No, no. Whether it's here, here, or across here, I mean, it'd have been an instant killer. I've I've witnessed 
when things like that happen. When a, but it's usually steel wire I've seen. But this was not steel, but still speed of anything coming at you. you I mean, you ever stick your hand out and yep. run down? Yep. A rock hits you that somebody's kicked up, or even a bug to hit you. That's it's that's things like a bitch. I could. It was just it just amazed me how much damage it was to the cars, and you know this. And, and but I applaud NASCAR for doing what they did, stop the race, yeah. let them fix the cars because it wasn't wasn't was it? anything of theirs. Yep. So wasn't their it'd fault? be hard to pun punish somebody for something that wasn't their yep. wasn't of their doing. And they gave Marcus his laps back, which was, I thought was real. Yeah, cool. so that really. Was, of course, it didn't help him much until he <laughs> he, he did finish it in tenth, but um, it's better than a few laps. But down. it didn't. But it didn't help. Didn't help Kyle much. Well, I mean, he ran up front still for yeah. a while. I mean, the, the airflow over the car was great, so. Another one of those Toyota motors that went up in smoke. Yes. So, and it was kind of funny that at the same time his was going up, Dale Jr.'s went up yeah. at the same time. Of course, it's not a Toyota motor. Yeah, Chevy and a Toyota. So, it's kind of weird how the, but the word I heard this week was they put too many laps on practice. On, in practice on those motors before they went out there to to race and now they're saying you know you shouldn't put but just a certain amount of laps on it and Here, here's my idea okay you're 600 mile race okay run your engine through the practice run the laps get the car set up go guess what change the engine go to the back of the field and come back through yeah. I mean but they, they can always refresh in the engine that they used up in practice but NASCAR has to prove them to do that, saying there was a reason why they did it. Yeah, I ran too many laps on it. It's going to blow up in about another 200 laps or 200 miles. I don't have, I don't see that. Well, hey, there, you can always over rev it. And, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You know, hey. And, and you can get your, it's like the tire thing, the, the Nationwide Series had a tire um, situation where they practiced for four hours on Thursday. Uh huh. And then came back and pack, practiced three more hours on Friday, and only had a certain amount of tires. And one of those tires had to start to race. Well, you know, one of them brand new yeah. sets had to start to race. So they were lobbying for one more set of tires, but they didn't get it. Nope, didn't get uh. them. But John West Townley was a smart one. He went out there and spun it through and got another set of tires. <laughs> So he, he was the one who pulled it off and got another set of tires. Hey, there's always a way around some of the stuff. You got that right. But it was a good race. I enjoyed it. I mean, it was a lot of action in there in different parts of the race. Oops. I was about sitting right under the microphone for that. <laughs> That's CJ texting me back. Oh, just, Text I sent him. He was laughing about it. Uh, so here we are, back waiting on Nick Harrison. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna leave, kind of leave it. Yeah, there he is. Hey, and you're speaking. There he is. Let's talk racing. Nick Harrison. Harrison. How you doing, Nick? Good, how you doing? All right, this is, you know who I am, and I'm with Roger on the show here, and uh, how's everything down Spartanburg? Oh, everything down Spartanburg's lovely. How you doing, Jack? I'm great. I'm doing good. You know, I'm a little partial to that 51, so I had, you know, I wanted to get you on here anyway. Oh, yeah, that's good to go, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And I, and I didn't wear my, I've been wearing my Libby shirt every every night that I come in here, but I didn't wear it tonight. Well, that's all right. That's not my lady's had a couple beverage for you. I, <laughs> I bet you did. Yeah. Well, Nick, tell, how, tell us how the things are going this year. You got, I mean, the car's running good. You had, you had off, got off to a pretty good start. Yeah, we got off to a real good start here, and then we've had a great run at Daytona 500. Got us a big boost in the points, and uh, we're looking pretty good. We had a we've had multiple drivers, Regan Smith, Austin Dillon, and. And AJ Allman there, which I guess everybody knows AJ ran really good at the Indy 500 the other day. And uh, he's going to be back in our car next week at Pocono. And uh, this weekend we got Austin Dillon back in the car for Dover. I, I think Austin tested his nationwide car 
uh, the three car just a few weeks ago, which he's running for the championship against the region. So it's, it's pretty cool to have both those guys in the car and they're running against each other for the nationwide championship. There's probably a little animosity between the two, but, uh, you know, when they get in a 51 car, we're just trying to run the best we can and get the most points out of everything we can out of those two. And then, uh, AJ's definitely a great talent, and uh, I think we'll go to Pocono. We'll, we'll really be something to deal with up there as well. Yeah, I think you got. I think you got a a, a good one in AJ. I, I think he's a he, he's a good race car driver. Oh, uh, AJ's good in anything he does. You know, good cars, uh, indie cars, uh, stock cars. You know, he's uh he he's just he's one of those guys that haven't won a cup race just yet, and it isn't because he hasn't led laps and been up there, and because of bad luck a few times he hasn't won one. But hopefully, we can pull one off with him here before the year's up. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to drive our car at Tacoma um, coming up, but we definitely got a good road race package. As you know, Jack, your son Lee Dodson car chief me last year, and we went out there and, uh, and almost won the race at Tacoma and also had a really good uh, run out at walking here. And had, we, had, we actually had park failures at both of those tracks, but uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we're pumped up about having AJ in the car for poking up because he's a... Uh, He's really, really determined to prove himself uh, to the sport here, and, and you know, it's uh, it's awful fun to crew chief guys that want to win as bad as you do sitting on top of the box. And uh, you know, Austin Jones a great, great talent. He comes from Dirt Lake models. You know, his dad Mike Dillon raced, uh, you know, back in the late nineties mm-hmm. and everything for RCR. But but Austin and his brother Ty, they they didn't just jump in and go nationwide racing and truck racing. You know, Austin champion. I, I'm pretty sure I'll be a champion when this year's up. But uh, those guys come up pretty hard, too. They come up to the dirt ranks and they're, you know, their granddaddy daddy and their daddy make them go, go learn how to race. You know, they didn't just jump in these uh, machines that are $5 high parts of machines and, and get out there and go. They really come up through these dirt tracks and learn how to race and learn how to drive loose race cars and bing bang and, you know, uh, you, you race against the rednecks per se, you know. And that's what, <laughs> that's what uh, our, our sport's built on and I love to keep that that motto going on, really. Well, how hard is it, Nick, for, for you to have to deal with having different drivers during the course of the season? I understand you're also going to have Ryan Truex in sometime this year, I guess, too. But um, you know, we, got, we got Truex coming in a little later in the year. I actually talked to his brother Martin today. Uh, you know, I was calling Martin. I, I wasn't sure if AJ could be poking or not, so I put a call out to Martin and said, Hey, how's your brother's shoulder doing? Uh, Ryan had a, a motocross track, or uh, I think it was a motocross track, and he tore his shoulder up, and he uh, he was going to recover and going to be back, and, and then he, they had to go back in and do surgery on it just last week. So he's out for another six or seven weeks, I think. Uh, Bert Martin, you know, called me and told me that today. But, uh, you know, having multiple drivers, Jack, you know me, man, I, I'm a racer, and, and no matter who's in that seat, we're going to work as hard as we can to go as fast as we can. And, uh you know, when guys aren't fast, I really don't like them. And when they're fast, I like them, you know. And that's just, you, you got to work well with them and you can't get down on them and all of this. And sometimes, sometimes we have mechanical failures or, or something go wrong in practice and like seats will speed out of the car. But we definitely, uh, we definitely work really hard to make sure our stuff's in line. And I think we're competing as well as we ever have. We're 15 points going in Dover, nine points out of 10th. And I think that's really strong for 15 employees and having three different drivers in the car. And, uh, like I said, you know, I love the guys when they go fast and not so much when they don't. And, you know, I'm just a grassroots racer, and I think they respect that from uh, from the seat talking to me on the radio and, and even during the race. You know, they know I'm as intense as they are, and I, I think there's a mutual respect there. I think there is, too. Just, I mean, the guys that you get to drive, they seem to, they seem to, they seem to blend well with you when they're driving. So I, I agree with you on that. Now I got a big question for you, and I, and, and I know you're gonna probably tell me you don't know anything about it, but what's going to happen after the brickyard? You're good to go, Jack. Uh, we got we got some people coming in. I, I can't really say now because they hadn't made an announcement, but there's uh, there's definitely money coming in, some sponsorship coming in. We've got full sponsorship for just a normal weekend. Uh, you know, we've got some full sponsorships for just a few other races, and they're gonna make an announcement later. But uh, we've got some guys coming in, investing in the team, and, and uh, I think James is really happy about it, and, and we're really happy about it. But, you know, just kind of off the pace here, we're, we're, we're going to be here till the end of the year for sure, and I think we're going to be here all year next year. It's really, really close to signing a deal for that. So uh, I was really pumped up. Uh, here in Spartanburg in the local paper, the headline this week was, uh, Space is not gone yet. 
we'll be running races uh, past the brickyard, and that's uh, that's really really great news for us. James is an awesome owner, and uh, he's one of the coolest guys in the Valley. You know, Jack, you know him, and and uh, you know just he he's one of the he's Joe America, you know, as he says, and, and NASCAR. You there? His Hello? Phone, his phone was kicking so much there. I thought that's what was happening to him. I have to wait back in. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you still there, Nick? Yeah, I lost you there for a second. I don't know where I got cut off, but you can take me. <laughs> well, your, your phone was kicking in and a little bit in and out, so that's what we fig- I figured it was. And so, yeah, I'm over, I'm over here in Morning Springs, South Carolina. I just ate dinner. I had a frog leg dinner here. Uh, some friends of mine cooked a big frog leg dinner, so I come over and eat with them. Oh, so you 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 out having a good time tonight, then? Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a country boy, so I like frog legs, you know? Yeah. Hey, I was going to tell you, you can tell us what the new stuff is. We won't, I promise you, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> well, there, well this, is what, this is what I'd say. The 51 cars go around all the way to Homestead, and, and uh, I think there's some stuff in the work to, to race uh, next year, so uh, I can't, I, I just, I'm not a justice today just yet. Because oh, that's I the... Probably, I know a little too much to tell, you know, and, and uh, I'm kind of holding, I'm sticking to my guns, I'm supposed to be quiet. Yeah, that that's all right. We everybody that has something new for us, and they say we can't tell you yet. And we always tell them, "I'll oh, go ahead and tell us." I won't say anything, but of course, the fact that it's going out live on the internet and then be on YouTube later, you know, hey, I didn't say it. <laughs> hey, I'm not not one of those guys to get all into the hoopla and all this stuff. And Jack knows that, but uh, we do have something, and we are going to be here, and that's the most important part. And I'm really pumped up about that because our guys, you know, we work really, really hard to put a good product out there. And uh, Mr. Finch puts us out there with Hendrick Motorsports chassis and Hendrick Motors, and I don't think you can buy better stuff than that. And, uh, you know, we got Reese Childress's grandson driving this weekend, and I don't know how you can pick some more bigger names in the sport from Mr. Childress and Mr. Hendrick. And then Finch is definitely loved among all the owners, whether it be Penske or, or Hendrick or RCR, or even, uh, I don't know if Ralph likes him a whole lot, but, you know, we're not four guys anyway, you're Chevy men. <laughs> Well, I know it's good for for James to be able to to, to get some money involved with the team because he's been pretty much footing this whole bill by himself, and that's got to be kind of that's got to be tough. Yeah, it does. It is tough, and, and you know the, the the way the economy is right now. James owns the construction business down in Panama City, Phoenix Construction. They do a lot of bridges and, and interstates and airports and stuff like that. But the way the government is and the, the economy is right now, a lot of stuff slowed down. So it's, it's really tough for him to fund it, you know, just off of his construction money and what his business makes. So we're out here digging, trying to do the best we can. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the marketing side of things. I'm on the, uh... Did we lose him again? Jeez. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's... I'm sorry, you've reached Let's Talk Racing's <laughs> hotline. <laughs> I'm back here. I'll step out. I'll sitting in a pickup truck here. Probably again. I'll step out. Maybe I'll get a little better service. Yeah. Well, Nick, you know, and uh, you know, I know probably more than a lot of people know about the 51. You have got for for a short bunch of guys. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of guys, but you got some of the the, the hardest working guys out of what you got. How do you motivate them to keep them working as hard as they do? You know, I think you really got to show them a lot of heart uh, from from a leadership standpoint, and let them know that you really, really care about racing and you really love racing, and and uh, that morale there kind of follows you. You know, when you're a leader on the team, you gotta you gotta make sure that your attitude doesn't go south and and doesn't get uh doesn't get down and out, and you gotta make sure you keep the morale going yourself, and and that's what I've had to learn a lot over the years, Jack. You know, you're still work for me for or six years and he's one of the one of the best mechanics in the garage you know, and bar none but he uh you know he, he's learned a little bit of that from me and, and he took that and he ran with it and and i think that uh you know i think that you really as, as a leader you just got to keep the morale going by showing heart and effort and never giving up you know the never give up motto is where it's at and that's that's what i try to do all right are, are, are there any uh any more nationwide races going to be run by, by phoenix this year or or is that going to go on the back burner for right now? I, I, I 
I'm going to tell you about a nationwide race coming up, and it's really, really cool, Jack. You're going to get pumped up about it. You're going to love it. We're going to run the cold trickle paint scheme, City Chevrolet, <laughs> with Kurt Busch driving at Daytona, and Josh did a repeat of what we did last year, and that was bringing the trophy back here to Spartanburg. And uh, there's a uh, Kurt's got some movie actors coming in from the movie, and we're studying movie quotes, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun because uh, Kurt's, uh, Kurt's definitely, you know, people people say they don't like Kurt. They, the people that don't like Kurt don't know him, man. He's an average Joe. He's a race car driver. He, uh, he grew up in Vegas, and he did come from a rich family. He worked for the city of Las Vegas doing um, uh, plumbing and, and city drainage and sewage. And uh, he went and volunteered on late model teams over there at the Bull Ring in Vegas. And, and his daddy bought him a Legends car, and he kicked butt in that. Then he moved up into the late model guys that, that he used to help and started winning that. And uh, Kirk came up the hard way. He really did. And he's not he's not arrogant at all. He's down to earth, and he's got, uh, he's got a lot of love for the guys on the team. And, you know, when we won that race in, in July last year, Kurt, Kurt backed up at November. Even though he left us once to the furniture row shed, he, he backed up November. They called me on Thanksgiving and said, Nick, you going to get the shop next week? I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm coming to see you. And he didn't say what he was doing, but he backed up with a gooseneck trailer and unloaded, unloaded 25 replica trophies from the day yeah. win we had last year in the Nationwide uh, race, which was $2,500 a piece, and handed them out to everybody that had, had a hand in on that win. And, I, I, I've never worked for another driver that did something like that, so it meant a lot to us. Yeah, he's he. I, the times that I was around him, I, he he's very intense, but he seems to be very you know he he likes the guys he's working with. That's that's exactly right. And if you if you work as hard as we do and build these race cars and 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 you know eat, sleep it, and, and do whatever else with it, you know you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you want somebody intense. You don't want somebody that's not intense, and you know. Kurt's had problems where he's blown up, he's sort of tempered, and, uh, but it looks like he's really got his stuff together out there in Colorado, man. Them guys are falling some butt this year, and I think he's going to be a guy in the chase that they're going to have to reckon with, whether they realize it or not. He, he's a past champ. He's did it before, and that guy's got as much talent as anybody out there. And on the right days and, and when the stars line up, he's going to really uh, he's gonna whip some butt out there, and I know it. Well, you're going to have to at least go introduce me to him the next time we're out of the track. And yeah, next time I see you at the track, I'm going to introduce you to Roger. Roger, Roger's the one that does it. You know, he he does all the work on the show here. And uh, I really appreciate you taking time out, Nick, from your day to call and talk to us and let us know what's going on. And you know, I'm wishing you the best because uh, you know I'm kind of partial to you. Yes, sir. Jack, I appreciate it. Now, Roger, I look forward to meeting you. Jack's at Richmond and Martin going. He comes to several races. So, uh, look forward to meeting you there and, and uh, look out for the city Chevrolet machine down there at Daytona because I think, uh, I think Cold Trickle will be on a mission. I think so too. And I'm, I can't wait for that. <laughs> sure. All right, man. Appreciate your time. Go back and eat you some frog legs. That's right. I think I got two left. I'm going to get in here and get them down. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Go jump on them. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Well, you got a little bit of a scoop. Not much of one. <laughs> teaser. It's a teaser. Come on now. But, yeah, I can't tell you how many times that there's a lot of times they'll say, all right, you can't say nothing to nobody, but here's the scoop. After we mention it, then you can say something. And I get that a lot, but I don't mind. But I do like to be able to tug the other way just as well, you know, say, oh, come on, well, just tell us. We won't tell nobody. I'm going to tell you, you know, Lee learned a lot in the years that he was there the few years he was there now I'm not going to sit here and say you know everything was hunky dory the whole time they they, <laughs> they they work hard they struggle they do you know they do a lot of stuff but um, when Lee was there he had his hands on every piece of that car and he and he was getting good leadership with through Nick and, and those guys and for a team that don't have a lot of people Fifteen people is all they got there, huh. and it's just amazing to me that they can come to the racetrack and be as. And if you go to a super speedway, you're going to deal with them, yeah, because they're going to be tough at a super speedway, no matter who's driving the car. They were good last year on the on the uh, that that road a team like that would be somebody I'd love to be able to get Terry matched up with. Well, now that he's. Well, 
you, you got to know Mr. Finch. You got to know how to, how to deal with it. <laughs> so, oh, but, uh, you ready to give we give Yeah, let's give go ahead and give Landon a call. call and see what he's got going on tonight. But I think it's real neat that that um that um Kurt's going to drive the city Chevrolet car for him. That is going to be really neat. I thought this was Joe's Pizza. Hello? Yeah, I'd like to order a large pizza if I could. <laughs> How you doing, Landon? What's going on? You know who this is, right? <laughs> yeah, I was... <laughs> it sounded like we woke you up. Did we wake you up? Oh. <laughs> hey, whenever you get a call about somebody ordering a pizza, there's got to be something good coming up behind it. <laughs> so what's going on in your world tonight, Landon? Uh, not much. I'm just sitting out on my patio, and uh, my wife took me some dinner, and we're gonna eat outside tonight. All right. Are you ready for the big? Are you ready to go to uh, to Dover this weekend? Yeah, I am. I, I like Dover. I think it's a it's a it's a pretty cool track. You know, it's it's one of the tracks that's pretty unique on our schedule. So, uh, Brian's but you know the casino's right there, and uh, it's uh, the Northeast is usually a pretty good trip. When do you when do you leave? You leave tomorrow to go up there? Yeah, I fly out tomorrow with guys, and, and I'll be there until Sunday. You know, on my way over here tonight to Hampton, I was listening to Sirius Satellite, and your name came up on on one of the conversations. And talking about your past and, 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 and driving the, the Nationwide in the Cup car. And do you, do you get a whole lot out of driving the Nationwide that helps you with the Sprint Cup car? Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, that actually time is valuable. Um, it's also, you know, it's another group of guys to work with. Uh, if, if you, those that don't know, I, I drive the number four car uh, for JP Motorsports for Johnny Davis. Uh, I like to be on it. He's my sponsor. And, and uh, it, it's cool to, to carry a, a, a brand name and, uh, and to be in another race. You know, I'm just a racer and I, uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, but, you know, I'm the... Uh, on the strategy side of it, it does help. I mean, it helps helps my tea time. It helps my, uh, uh, you know, how well I'm, I'm familiar with the track on a race weekend. And, and there's a lot of times that I get, you know, a good hour or two of practice in the nationwide car before I ever see the racetrack in the cup car. So, uh, uh, you know, that helps you go to racetracks that you haven't been to in a year. So, now you get, you, 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 you're doing both. You've always been a great qualifying guy. I mean, you qualify great. You've always been a good qualifying guy. What's it like now to, I mean, you were a Hendrick developmental driver, and now you're driving for probably teams that don't have a whole lot of money compared to what you were used to. How, how does that work for you? Um, it's, it's tough, and, and I mean, I, I, you know, I had a great job at Hendrick, and if it weren't for what I did at Hendrick, I, I wouldn't have gotten these opportunities. Um, you know, I got Jimmy Johnson test driver for five years, um, and I've got four championship rings with them. I've made a lot of good relationships, and I learned what a what a good car needs to drive like. So when these smaller teams have called me and 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 you know they they wanted to use me because of my experience with the bigger teams, um, it's helped. And and uh, it's it's definitely tough though. I mean, when you don't have the funding, um, you know, to 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 build the best race car and to, to to lease the best motors, um, I, I don't think I was mature enough to to maybe be in some of the opportunities that, I, that I'm in. I don't, I don't think I was mature enough to do it maybe three or four years ago. So um, I, I have a better understanding of the sport now than I ever have, and uh, and that's helping me get through uh, you know certain times. But I, I'm in great opportunities right now. It's a pleasure to drive for Johnny Davis. It's a pleasure to drive for Joe Falk and. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm with two teams that I, that I know I can go in, and, and that's why I'm investing so much of my time and effort into them. I, 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 think, I think it was interesting because I knew Danny Eflin, who was in the car before you were with J.D., and uh, I actually was doing their website for them last year and part of this year. So I knew all the guys that you have met there and knew about you coming in and had to be quiet for quite a while. <laughs> 
So yeah, they're, yeah they're, uh, they're good guys, and and uh, you know they work pretty hard, and and I, I I'm, I'm really enjoying my opportunity. Now you know Joe Falk is is a pretty big name in our area here in in the the, the eastern part of Virginia, and how how how's it how is it to drive for him? I mean, does he is he right in there with you to get the things you need and everything? Yeah, Joe is a great owner. He, he's a good guy, and uh, you know he comes from the car business, uh, which is a business I grew up in. I was a used car kid growing up. And, uh, and so, you know, we, him and I speak the same language and, and we, we get along pretty well. So I, I'm enjoying driving for Joe. Um, I've got a lot of respect for him and, and he's actually been around NASCAR for quite a while. I, I really want to, uh, oh, yeah. I want to be the one that builds his team up and, and, uh, and gets him a, uh, you know, maybe even a win someday. Yeah. I'm, I'm, when we were at Martinsville, remember we, uh, the 33 car went by and all the, the neat yeah. artwork that was on there that was really really good now are y'all still using that paint scheme or is that just for certain races you know i don't i don't know when we're on the uh the camo car yet it's camouflage and uh i don't know when we're running that car yet i, I it, it's got it's got a lot of good response so i i became a fan of it for sure i put pictures up on my facebook on it that's for sure <laughs> so uh, has how is the sponsorship going with your cup car i mean I know you had the bicycle uh, cards, playing cards on the car this past weekend. Uh, are they going to be with you anymore this year, or, or do you have any idea? They're going to be, yeah, they're going to be with us uh, at Dover, and uh, and that's a pretty cool brand. You know, everybody knows what bicycle playing cards are, and that's a uh, that's a brand that's been around a long time. So, uh, you know, it's cool to carry that brand. They're going to make some playing cards with my face on them and our race car on them. Uh, which is pretty neat, and, uh, and and we're full on in the sponsor, you know, search. It's, it's uh, you know, even even being a small team with uh, with little resources on the competition side, uh, we have a lot to offer um, a company that that wants to get involved in NASCAR, and, and there's a lot of unique ways to be involved in NASCAR, and that's what we're trying to get the word out um, to companies that that want to improve their business and improve their sales. Is that it's not just about stickers on a race car. It's, it's, it's you know all the other things behind it that we do and that we offer companies. So you know we've had a few companies jump on board and take advantage of that, like Dustin Boost and uh, and bicycle playing cars and and uh, and man, we've got a lot a lot of them on the horn and and uh, you know trying to, to line them all up so that uh, so that maybe we can close some deals for the summer and and, and help uh, bring in some. Some funding for the team to, to improve and, and to run better. Well, I'm gonna give you a little. You, you, you know, on your on on one of your things on the side of the car, you got Precon Marine on the side of the car. Yes, sir. You know, you you, you know Matt Miller, I'm sure, right? Yeah, absolutely. I have uh, talked to him today a little bit. Well, do you know? And you know my son Lee, so you know that's where Lee got started in the Hooters Cup Series is with Matt Miller. Oh, that's cool. And then I, we thought that was really interesting when, when we saw the car um, at uh, Martinsville with the pre-con on the side of it and everything. And Lee, and that's where Lee started was with with Matt Miller and his Hooters Cup team. That's cool. Yeah, that's, uh, Matt's a good guy, and it's, it's cool to have pre-con involved in the racing. They've, they've got a lot going on too. All right, now you you you've done a lot with the like you said earlier with the, being a test driver for Jimmy Johnson. Give us a little background of of, of all the your history a little bit for people that don't know about Landon. I mean, I know probably more than a lot of people do, but as far as your background and where you started and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I grew up uh, I grew up racing go karts and um, from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I grew up in the car business, and uh, and and I grew up just working my way up through the ranks. Um, I drove for my dad, and uh, you know he owned my race cars uh, when I was a kid, I was a teenager. And, uh, and his his rule with me was uh, you can race it, uh, but you uh, you have to build it yourself first. And so uh, so I had to learn how to build the cars myself, and and, and kind of. You know, developed a little bit of a knack for 
for how the cars worked and and, uh, and became interested in that as long, along with driving them and uh, and that helped me out a lot with my testing jobs and things like that so uh, you know it's uh it's something that that is you know helped me along my career and and uh, it, it, I got signed with Hendrick Motorsports on seventeen and, and it's been in NASCAR ever since. Didn't you, didn't you drive for a little while? Didn't you drive a... You were with, with JR Motorsports, too, right? Yep, I, I drove a, a partial schedule for Junior Motorsports. And, um, I, I've been around. I've, I've driven for a handful of teams. And you, you, you have been around a little while, because I remember when you... Uh, you even made a Pro Cup race down at... You, you uh, in Bristol one time, too, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, because I was there when you when I was there with Lee when he was working from uh, Woody Howard and y'all were doing the uh, Pro Cup race down there. I remember you being there. Yeah. Now, are you doing any testing or, or anything now with with your team or helping anybody else out? Um, I've done. I did a little testing with Ganassi this year. Um, we worked on their short track program. Um, you know, and, and we're just trying to get that up and running. They ran pretty good at Richmond, which is cool. I felt like I, I was able to have a hand in that, and um, uh, but been, but really been focused on my 33 car and, and now my number four car with uh, with Johnny Davis, and and, uh, and we've been running pretty good in that four car. We've, we've had some solid runs, and we feel like uh, every week we're we're capable of running kind of at the top of our heap in terms of the teams that uh, that have similar funding and, and resources as we do. How much? Um... How much interaction does your third your your cup car? Um, I'm sure you all do the in the Earnhardt Childress engines. Uh, no, we actually run uh, uh, Mark Smith motors. Oh, you run a Mark Smith motors. Do you all have any interaction with with any of the other Ford team? I mean, uh, Chevrolet teams um, to help you all out a little bit, or is or are you just out there on your own? Um, I mean, we're 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 kind of on our own. I mean, we're an independent team. We uh, we have the 33 number, which is you know it's formerly a children's number, and uh, and th- and that's kind of a benefit to us because Austin Dillon still runs a part time schedule, and and so you know we we kind of worked out a relationship where they have access to our number when they want to run it, and uh, and that helps us out because when they run it, it's uh, um, you know it's, we can benefit from that somehow, and and we try to get some better cars out of the deal or something, but we're I mean, we're fighting our own fight, and uh, you know we've just got a handful of employees. Uh, we run Mark Smith Motors, and uh, and you know we try to keep our costs down because we uh, you yeah. know we have to operate off of the winning. Um, you know we our our team oper- <laughs> operates off the purse. Can we put you on the landing? Try to find some sponsorship to uh, help oh. improve it. Well, good. Well, I appreciate you taking time out to give right, us a call and talk with us tonight. And you, you, you know, I've always been one of your fans, so uh, I, I'm hoping things really get good for you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. All right. Appreciate it, man. Talk we'll to you later. See, we'll see you at one of the races. Later. All right. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. Where's my pizza, by the way? <laughs> oh, sucks. Be gone already. There's, there's a kid, and, and you know, maybe when he said he wasn't, mature enough when he got signed by Hendrick to do the things he did to understand what he was doing. Yeah. No truer words have ever been said because he he had some rough times. I mean, he was a good test driver, and he's a good qualifier. But he's had some tough times with a race car during a race, and so, especially the cup cars and stuff. But he has developed into, into a pretty decent race car driver now. So and That's what you need. Takes time to develop into, and he and he's not well like 25, 24, 25 now. So yeah. he's done well. He's done real well. So we didn't have a, we didn't get CJ. No, that was Al. Oh, finally calling, and I'm sitting there. Like, oh, okay, he says, well, I finally had a chance to call. Yeah, I said, okay, okay. I said, well, you want to talk to Landon? He says, well, I don't know him. <laughs> Plus, it was the end of the thing. He says, well, why don't we do it next week? I said, all right, we'll do it next week. <laughs> So he's still waiting for Mike Embry to get there from oh, South Carolina. Okay. So who knows? He may have been having to work on some late project for Auto Week. Well, 
I'm enjoy, I enjoy talking to Nick and Landon because they're the guys that I've that I've known and I've hung around with yeah, a little bit. It's so. always easy when you got to talk to somebody. I know, it really yeah. Do, yeah, I mean, it's really, I mean, when I have a knowledge of who they are and what they've been, what they're doing, it makes it easier for me to talk to them a little bit, but he, those two guys, I've, I've been around them a lot here the last couple of years, so <laughs> I know. Well, that's like I said, I've, I've talked to Danny on and off, text him a lot, and when uh, they sent me the information that they weren't, going to have Danny there anymore and that Landon was going to come in I says okay they didn't say not to do anything but they did say don't do anything with the website so I just didn't do anything until they did the official announcement they sent it to me and I popped it up on the website and they were then ready to go well I'm, I'm glad he's getting some seat time he, he, oh yeah <clears throat> he'll he'll develop and, and I hate to say this he was he's, do, he's doing better than Mike Wallace is. Yeah, he he's had some better finishes than Mike Wallace. It's usually been the other way around. So he's 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 done pretty. Ask decent. me later about that. But you know, <laughs> and, and I, this is um, this is probably off the record. I mean, off the what we're talking about. But I was looking today at the entry list for the races this week at Dover. Uh huh. There are forty three cup cars for forty three spots. That's Nobody's sweet. going home this week. Yeah. But the interesting thing is there's not but 38 nationwide cars for 40 spots. So well, somebody's going to pull up another car and go out there. They and should. I mean, dude, it's, a, it's a good opportunity. And then in the trucks, they're in, they're in but 34 for 36 spots there. So, I mean, you know, it's a good opportunity for somebody to move along. Oh, somebody else joined in. Let's look at 30, 38. Yeah, 38 out of 40. So that's that's nationwide. Yeah. And you know, to be announced on that one. Let's see what's on the four car. Oh, he's also got a TBA. Yeah, he but he's going to have, um, he said he had fight seal on there again this week. Yeah, probably so. Now, this is what's strange here. Because the owner they show for Landon's car is Gene Vess. I didn't know that. I don't even know who that he is. A he is a, he's involved with Johnny Davis in some in some form because he's from the um, it's not Spartanburg. It's the one before Spartanburg, the town before Spartanburg. Greenville. No, the one with the big uh, peach out there. Gosh, I can't think of it. Go there all the time. Gosh, I can't think of it. Gaffney. Gaffney. Okay. Gaffney's and he's from Gaffney. So. Let's talk racing. Hey, this is CJ Payson. Uh, I should have did the pizza joke with CJ. Do I know? Oh, we called we called Landing Castle and we called him instead of him calling us and when he answered I asked where my pizza was. Oh nice. <laughs> you know, started out with a little laughter and throw him off, you know. So well, hey, that's what you gotta do. You gotta start off with a little bit of laughter. That's the way to get the show kicked off. That's right. Well, I'm gonna get the show kicked off on you. This is Jack Dyson. I'm gonna get the show kicked off with you. Tell us about this truck deal this weekend you got at, at Dover. Well, I'll tell you one one thing. It's one incredible opportunity for me. Um, that's for sure. Uh, you know, to start off with, I gotta thank Bobby Donner and everybody at SS Greenlight Racing for even giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, it's it's like no other. You know, we didn't have to. Uh, you know, bring big bucks to the table and whatnot. You know, it was a it was a pretty good deal. So I'm very excited for it. And uh, I'll be in the Del Marva Chevy dealers number zero seven truck tomorrow for practice, qualifying, and the race on Friday. So um, you know, I'm very excited for it. Uh, this, like I said, this is um, you know once in a lifetime opportunity to get something like this. So um, you know, I'm very excited, and I'm going to make the most of every minute of it. Cool. So who all have you got? I mean, I'm, you may have said it, and I was I was reading reading your thing here. Who all is going to be sponsoring on the car? Sponsoring it. Who all is going to be sponsoring on your truck? Uh, well, we've got Del Mar Chevy dealers. They're going to be the primary sponsor on there. Uh, we've got Carl Deputy and Son Builders. They're actually one of my sponsors. Um, you know, to bring over to the table. So that was uh, that's pretty cool. And we've got some of the you know once everybody heard that I was going to be racing in the truck series in Dover. 
uh, a lot of the local businesses from my hometown uh, and, you know, whole state of Delaware uh, really chipped in and wanted to help out. So it kind of made the deal a little bit sweeter and, you know, a little easier for everybody's checkbook. So, um, like I said, everybody has come together, you know, Service Lab, Ed's Auto Center, uh, Little Caesar's Pizza of Delaware, uh, you know, everybody has come on board. I'm so thankful for it. You know, I don't know if y'all can hear the excitement in my voice, but I am just ecstatic to have this opportunity. It's unreal. I've I've talked to you quite a bit before, CJ, so I can already hear it. I can hear that little, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, little Caesar's Pizza. Okay, where's my pizza? <laughs> well, we'll have to get something delivered. How about that? <laughs> But Ed, I really like the fact that you're getting to go out there and do this. Uh, also, being up there in your hometown uh, makes a chance for a second trip sound pretty good. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been to Dover twice with the Cane In Series. We've run really well both times there. And I don't know, you know, what it is about the whole track. I just, I love the format of the, of the race that we're going to be doing. You know, it's uh, going to be a little bit crucial for, you know, um, strategy there which will be pretty cool so i'm excited for that um you know we've got uh part of jeff gordon and jay johnson's pit crew they're gonna be pitting on my truck so we've got you know all the stars are aligning and you know as long as uh, this truck is uh you know hold up for me we're, we're good the truck is seems to be great equipment and I, I just can't wait really and um you know i've never been in a truck before i've never went and tested uh i'm not so i'm kind of jumping into this blind and uh, I'm really excited for it, though. It's crazy that sounds, but you know, um, we're gonna make the best of it. Huh? The well, one thing I can tell you: the full moon was last weekend. Well, good. So we don't <laughs> need a full moon in Dover. You got that right. <laughs> now you haven't had any testing time in the truck at all. Not at all. I, I have only I've only sat in that truck for about you know ten twelve minutes when we were mounting the seat. That as, as I say, it. about long enough to put the seat in, and that was about it. Dang, should have run, should have run you down to Rockingham. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like to run Rockingham and Dover, and you know, who knows? You know, if we do well enough in this race, it might transpire into you know a couple more race deals this year, and uh, you know, who knows what could uh, provide for us for next year. That's what, that's the most exciting part about this business. Is you know, I look at my friend Kyle Larson. He's got it made, you know, he's got the whole truck deal and the nationwide deal and stuff, and, you know, he's locked in, but, you know, I like the excitement of, you know, having to, like, have a small opportunity like this and gradually working my way up, and, you know, we're just trying to take it slow at this point in my career and, uh, you know, really develop and hone my skills, so um, I'm just excited to have this opportunity. Like, like I said, it's just it's an amazing feeling to be, you know, racing in your home state in the truck series. Cool. Well, now we're also going to be seeing you down here at Langley Speedway on June 22nd, too, right? Yep, absolutely. We're planning on going there with a the K&N car, and, uh, you know, unless, you know, some truck deal comes through or something, but we're we're very excited for that. Um, speaking of the K&N, uh, I get out of the truck after the truck race, and uh, I hop into my car. I drive uh, all through the night, about nine hours, down to Bowman Gray. Um, and uh, went to Salem, North Carolina. I raced there on Saturday, do the whole shebang there, and then uh, I've got three days until Iowa. So we're uh, we're pretty excited. Man, you got you gonna have a you gonna have a tough day Friday and Saturday, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. But hey, that, that's what this is what it's all about. I live for moments like these, for you know, times pressed between events. That's where I think I really. Uh, you know, to show my best for some crazy reason. When I'm under a lot of stress, that's why I perform. So I'm excited for it. Now, now you need to sneak Jack into Dover. He he wanted to go to Dover, and I didn't realize it till it was too late. And didn't able to get the media credentials for him. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool if like, y'all came next year, and you know, if we had the same deal or something different. But as long as we're at Dover, it'd be good to come down there and we can do some interviews. No problem. Now, when you're K and N deal, you. You got um, Mark McFarland helping you out, right? Oh, good old Mark. Yeah, sure do. And uh, that's kind of one of the deals, like uh, that I kind of brought towards the table with Bobby Donner. Is um, my my crew chief, Mark McFarland, and I we are very very close together. Um, you know, him and I I consider him my best friend slash brother. So uh, we've got a very tight relationship. And uh, when we got the call from Bobby Donner, I was, was one of my main concerns was can I bring Mark? to the table to crew chief me. 
and they said without a without a doubt that he can come. So he's going to be true chief of the truck this weekend, and I'm really excited for that because you know hopefully we can take the momentum and everything we've learned from the K&N car and put it into a truck. You know I know it's not going to handle uh, you know like the K&N car, but at least I have a familiar voice in my head and you know a little bit of guidance there. Because Mark, he's ran the truck series for a couple of years and you know knows all about them. So I'm, I'm really excited. Everything's kind of aligning together, and as long as we can have some good luck on our side, I think we'll do just fine. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'll, you'll have to remind me, or hopefully I'll remember when you're down here in June to go say hi to him because I used to race against him when he was running uh, around in Virginia in late models. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, he's a, he's been around the block a time or two with racing. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing that's awesome about Mark is he's raced, you know, a lot of different places and, uh, you know, most of them being the tracks that we run at. So that, it's kind of cool because then he can give me insight well. Hey, this works here when I ran here. Try this out. You know, nine times out of ten, it'll work like charm. Yeah, because he, if um, when he was racing at Langley, he used to get around Langley pretty good there. Yeah, that's why he's really excited to go to Langley. We've got a good car for there, I think. So, and I think Old Dominion Speedway too. Yeah, he well, he started at Old Dominion. Yeah, and came down here. Now I got a, I got another question for you. Now, were you with him when he went and did his Pro Cup race the other day? Yes, I was. Um, unfortunately, I was. And, um, you know, I got to give Mark McFarland one thing. He He's probably one of the most incredible drivers I know. Um, he led 90% of that race. And, um, uh, and it, you know, I wouldn't say inexperienced kid, but an uh, impatient uh, kid got into him on the green-white checker. And uh, on the white flag lap, you know, kind of just bumped him up out of the way enough that, you know, Clay Rogers and... Uh, Justine could get by and uh, you know kind of ended it right there for him and I was really heartbroken but um, you know to see all the passion that he puts in the race and even if it's for one race it's not something that he just throws together I mean he he did an excellent job you know fastest in practice set the pole uh, led most of the race you know just walked through the cars for him at the end of the night but they knew that, that they knew he was there so it's cool to see him come back to the series and really do well yeah he's always been I mean um, when I was back there, my son was part of the, the Hooters Pro Cup Series when he was running then. And he was always the top dog when he when it came to the Hooters Pro Cup Series. Yeah, he was very fast. I remember watching Mark on TV. And, like, as crazy as it sounds, you already think I'm making this up. I used to root for Mark and, you know, through all of his series that he went through, whether it was trucks or nationwide and, and Pro Cup and late models, I always was a big fan of Mark. And now he's my crew chief. And that's what I think is so cool and crazy all at the same time is a guy I've looked up to for most of my life is now my crew chief. And it was just, we didn't know him, uh, you know, until I moved down to North Carolina. And uh, we finally started a relationship down there and got really good friends. And been down here on uphill ever since, really. So, so how old were you when he started rooting for him? Because I know you're you're still a young kid and Mark's been around now back in the 90s. Yeah, I was actually probably... Six or seven years old, maybe. Oh, are you ready to be in a cart, then? <laughs> yeah, I was in carts at the time, and you know, you, like, uh, you know, and then I really started paying attention to him. You know, after he started, uh, you know, racing the late model there, Old Dominion, he moved up, um, and then I started racing the Old Dominion two years after uh, he started driving for Junior. And um, you know, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, I, I'm racing the track mark straight that. And I'm rooting for him on TV in the Pro Cup Series, and it's just it's awesome. I mean, I love Mark to death. He's like my brother. I'd do anything in the world for him, and uh, we've got a good uh, driver crew chief relationship, and it it works, and and uh, it can only get better from here. Yeah, it's kind of funny you're talking about that when you were younger. You were pulling for him back when he was racing late miles. He they, they he came to Southampton Speedway where I used to race. Okay. And yep, I, I remember him talking about the Southampton days. And he, they had a thing at Southampton where they gave kids rides, and you know they would uh, during one week, one week every year they would let the kids come out and ride in the race cars. Oh, cool! My son didn't ride with me; he rode with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, he goes back a long ways. Well, we're wishing you the best. Hope everything works out good this weekend, and uh, maybe we can get back with you sometime soon and find trying, out. Trying to kick him off already. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, like I said, you know, I'm. I'm I was really not here. You don't have to worry about eight o'clock. Me and, 
you know, it's just almost like a God sent type deal. I mean, I can't really believe that like this is happening and you know, every all the stars are slowly but surely aligning and I think that, you know, we can you know, as long as we come out of Dover unscathed and I think there's potential for another race or two, so I mean it'll definitely have to be watching out and I think it's uh be something to watch for sure. So it'll be on speed count for anybody who wants to watch it. Well, I got I got a question for you. What what would you say would make it a successful weekend for you at Dover? What kind of what kind of thing would you think would be a real success? I think real success is going there, starting and finishing the race. Really, um, you know, I expect a lot out of myself. I, obviously, I want to go out there and win. You know, I'm I'm very I don't know how to say this. I, I'm very level-headed enough to know that I'm not going to go out there and win the first race. I might on a fluke deal. Uh, it might be, you know, my type of situation and the stars might align, but I think as long as I can start and finish the race and, you know, success to me is probably a top 20 or top 15 finish. And I just think that's good to get my feet wet. I've never been in a truck. Like, if I tested in a truck, I would, uh, you know, I would obviously expect a whole lot more, but, um, you know, when it comes to this weekend, I think it's all about getting experience and track time since that's something that I'm lacking right now. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it'll be pretty interesting to see how we do. Um, you know, I think I'll adapt to it pretty well from what Bobby's told me and what Mark's told me. It's um, my type of truck to drive, really. Yeah, I've, I've known uh, several friends that have gone out and did their first time in a truck. And you do have, you, you're going to definitely have to buckle down feel like it what the truck's going to do when you're doing your practice laps before the before you go out and qualify it's just simply it is a different beast yeah and that's that's the biggest thing that uh you know mark and bobby were telling me is, you know um i came from dirt so i i raced dirt my whole life and that's my type of driving style is driving it is absolutely as hard as possible every lap and, and you know, that's the way they say to drive these trucks you got to drive them out of control so you know, I, I think I have a, you know, statistically an advantage in that point, but a disadvantage because I've never been in one. You know, it's a whole new ball game. This is a monster mile. And, yeah, that, that's actually something that uh, is, I think, the, the biggest part is, you know, respecting the monster mile because it will bite you. And um, I almost had it happen to me in the K&N car uh, two years in a row. You, know, you get a little confident going into turn three and four, you pick up the gas too soon. And that turn four wall comes at you fast. I promise you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's a, it's, we, um, I think it's something that I'm really going to enjoy. And, like, as you all know, you, you, I'm sure you all talk to a bunch of truck drivers on here. And if there's any advice you can share with me, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Timothy usually does pretty good out there. Yeah, he does. Oh. But my, my question is going to be, how you're going to be going from Dover on Friday to Bowman Gray. That's got a, I mean, that's two different, complete different styles of racing. Absolutely. We're going to see what I'm made of this weekend, I think. You know, we we get to go from the high banks of Dover, uh, you know, driving as fast and hard as you can, and then going to a place like Bowman Gray where actually, you know, if you slow down and go fast, I mean, we we tested there, I guess it's two weeks ago now, and uh, as crazy as it sounds, the slower, or you know, I entered the turn, the better I can get, you know, pick up the throttle up off the corner, and the faster our lap times were. So, um, I, I don't, I don't know. It's going to be confusing. It's going to be hard. You know, like, um, you know, I've got a nine-hour drive, and and most of my guys and my crew, they're they're coming to watch the truck race. So, I'll, I'll be able to catch some sleep between, you know, the nine hours of driving. But I was going to tell you, you, better have your dad at least to come with you to drive. Yeah, exactly. I need some, uh, need a little bit of like some amp energy or Red Bull or something. But, um. No, like, what I think the biggest thing is just being able to focus while I'm going down the road, you know, and uh, thinking what I did at the Bowman Gray test is mainly going to help me out. You know, as long as I can play, you know, those laps through my head and, um, you know, just kind of get a feel for what I'm transitioning into, I think I think we'll be all right. But, but it's, like I said, it's weekends like these that I really enjoy because you can you can further progress your career this way because you're you're – you're trying to be diverse within 48 hours of two tracks, so I think it'll be a lot of fun, and uh, it'll be an experience for sure. Now, the weather's supposed to be kind of warm this weekend. Are you prepared for that as far as being hydrated and everything ready for the race? Absolutely. Um, I am drinking more water and Gatorade than I ever have in my whole entire life. 
you know, obviously you got to eat healthy, you got to work out, you got to really prepare your body for, you know, a brutal situation like this coming up. Um, you know, but the cut guys, they do it uh, two, sometimes three, three times a weekend. So I don't think it would be any problem for me to, you know, run 200 laps one day and then 150 the next. But, uh, you know, like you said, the heat, it'll take a lot out of you, especially at Dover. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you have a ton of G-forces at Dover, and it takes a lot of energy out of your body. So you're exerting so much, but yet again, you have to take so much in before that, so that way, you know, you're you're not in the negative stage of energy. So I think we'll be all right. Now, uh, have you tried any of the new uh, cool shirt, cool suit shirts? No, I have not. I used to have one uh, back when I ran late models back in about 2010. And um, from there on out, I haven't ran one, to be honest with you, because I had a crew chief, and uh, Mark, he's kind of like this, too. He, uh, he likes to conserve as much weight as possible. So um, I don't run one anymore. And to be honest with you, y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I don't even run, uh, uh, you know, an air duct to my helmet, no blower or anything. I, I, I don't know why, but... Um, just something I don't do. It's not for any purpose or anything, but um. Well, you're just still young anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I've got energy to waste, so <laughs> might as well do it while I'm young, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, definitely stay hydrated. Uh, that's definitely going to be a big thing. Uh, well, uh, I might send you a text about something later on that you might want to help add to your hydration. Some info. Yeah, that'd be great. Like I said, any advice y'all have that you've heard before. Um, you know, I'm looking for every advantage and a uh, little add-on that I can get, you know, without going uh, too overboard. But like I said, it was, this deal was done within, you know, the past two weeks. So um, getting everything in line and getting everything together was uh, a little hard and a little tough. But, you know, it's going to be worth it in the end because I'll be out there racing the truck. And uh, it's something that I've always dreamed of, you know. But uh, you never really think that things will come to fruition uh, as fast as they do. So it, it's just an awesome feeling. I'm sure... You guys hear people like me all the time doing their debut, and I'm just, I'm excited. I really am. I wish y'all could be there to witness it. Uh, I'm excited for you, too, uh, and I wish I could be. But yeah. we'll, we'll just have to catch it on the TV, I reckon. Yeah, and, and we're gonna be at, we're gonna be at Langley on the twenty second when you come down, and we'll we'll, we'll we'll get the inside scoop from you then. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have some fun with it. How about that? That'd there be great. Go. All right, man. Appreciate you taking time to call. Good luck this weekend. Get plenty of rest between between races. Absolutely. That's, that's probably going to be the key thing of the weekend right there is rest. Yeah, do me a favor, and I don't know if I have your email address or not. Text it to me so I can send you the info. Okay, sounds good. Is that the hydration info? Yeah, there, it's, it's not, you'd be surprised. It's something very simple to add to the water that's going to greatly help you. It's something really stupid, but it works. Oh, well, hey, I'm up for anything. Trust me, I, I have a little quirky things I do, so that's will just... <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I mean, it, it. I've I've done a lot of research since my wife had her stroke, and I have. I mean, I tell you, what, I've done some late night researching on a lot of different things and what affects the body. So. Okay. Well, I'd be uh, I'd be glad to hear it for sure. Okay. Well, you have a good time, and we will talk to you later, CJ. All right. Sounds great. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, well, Dan. We said hi. Okay. Well, do. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye. All right. Bye. Gonna be fun. Gonna oh, be yeah. fun for him. He, he is going to enjoy his butt off. Um, I remember when who was it? Was it Natalie Sather? When she first did a couple of them with Daryl Walter racing. Um, of course, C.E. Falk when he went out there. I I hope this is a really good team. There, that's got a good got a good equipment for him. They got decent equipment. I mean, I'm, they're, they're not one of your high buck teams. Uh-huh. Um, they're out at the Morrisville Airport, out of drag strip, really. I guess is what you call it. But uh-huh. They're out there, and I've been over there and watched them do pit practice. I've watched them do everything over there. I mean, they're a good team. They're they're a solid team. Now I'm not, you know, they're they're still underfunded compared to a lot of a lot of teams. But he sounds like he's got some people but with him. So yeah. and they do have good equipment. So you never can tell. He he might he might surprise a few people. So I'd I'd love to see it. He's he's like a kid that's getting his first chance to get into the candy shop. Mm-hmm. You know, and 
even even when this was not there and I was talking to him up at Richmond after the Canaan race out there and it he was even even then I mean he was plenty of energy still left into him after the race yeah, he's he's young he's young yeah he's got <laughs> I was nice I was gonna say hey, he's still young and stupid <laughs> but but hey there's a lot of stuff I'm learning from everybody well they got that right but anywho well, hopefully everybody enjoyed the show tonight. Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. I, I had a good time. I enjoyed it myself, too. Now i got to figure out what i got to pluck at so I can finish the thing out here. Oh, here we go. Anyway, hopefully we'll catch everybody. See you next week. See ya. <laughs> I wasn't going to say what I said much. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, what can I say? Let me make sure something here. Yeah, we're still rolling. Yep, yep. Oh, that's why, because we're... But I do this. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV Hi, I'm Sam Hunt driving 42 car on a thing Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts number 94 at South Boston Speedway be sure to listen to